slowly but surely destroying New Zealand. It's destroying the New Zealand in which we grew up. It's destroying the New Zealand that we saw The today. art of it's politics is often described as a grand show in which the politicians are the actors and the voters are the audience. The politicians star in what is an ongoing performance, one designed to entertain and placate the electorate. They tell me I've won a nickname. And as with any performance, it's easy to be seduced by the smoke and mirrors and the simple theatrics of it all. It's also easy to forget that behind the scenes, the real story is being played out in a much more complicated world. A world crowded with issues. Issues are the lifeblood of our politics. And through the years, we've had political parties to represent almost everyone. The Christian Nationals, the Independent Political Association, the Family Man's Party. And then, of course, the Independents, dozens of them. A 68-year-old in Auckland said he was standing just to make a personal statement and he'd resigned if elected. Some parties have been more radical than others. Handsome, anti-Maori violence, per party. Six, three. And some have successfully championed issues and ideas few of us expected to see enter the political arena. The nudists are emerging from the bush. They are coming out of their holiday camps, turning their backs on their volleyball games and barbecues, and coming here to Parliament. In 1970s New Zealand, nudists were regarded as hopelessly misguided, genitally fixated hippies. Or worse, perverts. But in 1972, that began to change when the New Zealand Naturists Federation announced the formation of the country's first nudist party. The following is a party political broadcast on behalf of the Naturist Socialist Party. Children, they are the future of our country. But what if these children grow up ashamed of their bodies? What kind of leaders would they make? And what kind of country would they lead? It's a big question mark, isn't it? Good evening. Tonight I'd like to show you how we can banish that question mark. The naturist socialists believe that clothing is an impediment to open and honest government. That's why we want to take away the shame. We believe universal nudism is the key to a more transparent democracy, as well as a healthier lifestyle. It's time for a New Zealand. A naturist socialist government would scrap police uniforms and use the savings to fund 500 extra nude police. We will make nudism mainstream, thus attracting overseas visitors and potentially doubling our tourism sector. We will phase in nudism in the public sector over a five-year period, with the aim of making New Zealand fully nude by 1980. We believe New Zealand could be the first nude-based economy within 20 years. So why not join us with a nude way? Vote Naturist Socialist for Transparent Government. The Naturist Socialists campaign of 72 has been well organised. They've canvassed heavily in leader Kevin O'Shea's Northcote electorate, but faced unique problems. There was the weather, as well as the prejudices of ordinary people, many of whom refused to take them seriously. G'day. Hi. Hi, we're from the Naturalist Socialist Party. We're just here to ask a few questions. Yeah. Critics may have regarded the naturists as something of a joke, but their baggy scrotums and saggy breasts obscured some surprisingly innovative and astute policy. 
The working for nude families policy preceded Labour's similar but fully clothed version by more than 30 years. And it's the naturist socialists we can thank for another key element of New Zealand's social policy. The Accident Compensation Corporation was originally conceived by a nudist think tank as a means to fund treatment for the high number of burns suffered by naturists at Sun Club barbecues. Hello. Hi. Now, I'm going to show you three things and you've got to tell me what you do with them. Number one... Well, you seem to know what to do with that one, all right. Number two, a handkerchief. Excellent. Remember, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Now, number three, a bowl of disinfectant. Hey, you don't drink it, man. That's for the soiled handkerchief, which is full of germs. Got it? Good. Remember, don't spread germs. Few issues penetrate as intimately or as darkly as the fear of arse banditry. Up until 1986, this popular gay leisure pursuit was a criminal act. Homophobia was enshrined in New Zealand law. But when the Homosexual Law Reform Bill came before Parliament, gays took to the street to support the end of sexual discrimination. There are twice as many gays in New Zealand as there are club rugby players. They are scattered right through our society. They are among the people you work alongside at your job. They are the ordinary people you see in the streets. They are everywhere. Look, there's one, and here's another one, who helpfully gave a potted history of gay rooting. Before gay saunas were around, or before they became sort of commonplace, um, and before there was a large gay community as such, um, gay men, the only way they tended to find other gay men were in things like toilets or, or, or the beats and that, and, um, which is pretty sort of <laughs> yucky. Yuki wasn't the half of it for National MP Norm Jones, New Zealand's favourite homophobe. You're down the drain! You're back into the sewers! You're back into the sewers where you come from! What we're looking at here! I don't love homosexuals! As far as I'm concerned, you can stay in the gutter! He says there's no doubt homosexuals and closet homosexuals wield power in high office and governments all over the world. No, it wasn't a deliberate thing that I wore the pink um, vest. And in fact, being secure in my sexuality, I felt that I could wear pink on any occasion whenever I wished. I liked Norm. He was a good guy. He was to the right of Genghis Khan, but he was a, he was a nice old chap. In fact, one of that generation now almost completely dead, by and large, but a man of, um, of, of, uh, of infinite humour and fascist viewpoints. What about policy-making groups like the State Department and the States? Well, uh, one doesn't know. They'd be closet homosexuals. For everyone that's come out of the closet and declared themselves a known homosexual, there are probably dozens of others inside the closet wielding this sort of power. And I quite don't doubt that they're in New Zealand too. In fact, I know if this place would probably close down tomorrow if they all come out of the closet. What, Parliament? I believe, no, the Beehive. Mr Jones says the country must be alerted to the international gay threat and be prepared to stand up against it. An anti-bill petition, which claimed to have 800,000 signatures, was presented to Parliament. Battle lines were drawn. On one side, mad Christian bigots. The On the other side, great big blathering homos. Labour MP Fran Wild introduced the bill. And although she came to the protest buttoned up to the neck to ward off lesbian advances, she despised the homophobes and had visions of a gay holocaust. These are the ones who are the perverts, not the gay and lesbian community. And if this bill doesn't get through, then what, who will be next? That's what my question today. I was born after the Second World War, but from this and some of the meetings I've attended with Others opposing the bill, I, I am beginning to understand what it must have felt like to be Jewish in pre-war Germany. I think it's been a tremendous day. It's been a day 
of the people of New Zealand. And the whole presentation has been uh, one of professionalism, one of concern, one of dignity. And I think it's been a marvellous historic day in parliamentary history. The bill became law. But when Graham Lee was later made Minister of Civil Defence, he continued to warn New Zealanders of the homosexual menace and modelled this high-tech, gay-proof thermal sheet. People owe it to themselves and to their neighbours to actually be prepared. TV One Monday. I'm getting very high readings for cocaine. A suspicious traveller. It's a voice. It's a voice. It's a voice that you haven't say. I don't have any voices inside. Needs deeper investigation. Then the big day arrives for a brave little girl. She's been stronger than what we are. And a major fall. Holding shattered bones together. It's exquisitely painful. And a minor prick. That's when we start getting worried. Test the team on medical emergency after border security. Monday, 7.30, TV One. I cannot hold it, Captain. Let's see, mate. Yeah. Photographs? Hey, fire! You got trouble, my lord? I am poorly. Block nose, block sinuses. The Greeks have left a large wooden horse at the gates to the city. Drag it inside, I suppose. Mm. Avoid stuff-ups. Sudafed unblocks your head so it clears your thinking. Imagine a world where your dreams gave you beautiful skin. Introducing new Johnson's Dreamy Skin. A warm bath or shower and our unique blend of aromas is clinically proven to help you sleep better. Massage your body with our dreamy lotion or cream enriched with nourishing vitamins and moisturizers. You'll wake up feeling energized with radiant looking skin. Beauty Sleep from Johnson's. you can enjoy your favourite programmes in crystal clear, digital quality for free. Saving you and New Zealand. Tip number two. Driving your car to work comes at a cost. It's not just the cost of the environment. There's fuel, vehicle maintenance and parking. By sharing a ride, you take another car off the road, which saves the environment, saves you money and lets you catch up with friends at the same time. So share a ride. It'll be saving you and New Zealand. <coughs> oh, excuse me. A cough's your body's natural way of clearing mucus. Benadryl Chesty Fort contains guaifenesin and bromhexine to help loosen the mucus. And, you know, make it easier to shift. And there's pleasant tasting syrup to soothe. Oh, I feel better now I've got that off my chest. Benadryl, the cough expert. Brought to you on Freeview HD. TVNZ HD brings you more. It's just a giant field of kaikuia grass now, but this is the actual spot where Te Triti o Waitangi was signed. Interestingly, there's no sign to actually mark the spot. Sadly, the birthplace of our nation is now little more than a tourist trap. 
in which visitors are taxed $12 for the privilege of viewing a rather crude facsimile of the treaty. And here it is. The treaty was designed in part to protect the commercial interests of both Maori and Pākehā. And nowadays, nearby Paihia, with its preponderance of garish signage, is a reminder of the uglier side of that commercialism. If Maori had known that signing the treaty would ultimately lead to the arrival of the Lighthouse Sports and Party Bar and its ilk, things might have turned out differently. The treaty has long been a hot topic of debate. Of course, I'd never seen one before, so I talked to it with a poker. <laughs> Poor Pookie's never forgiven me, have you? <clears throat> What's your opinion of this contract with the Maori, Sir Graham? What is it, the uh, docket of white onion? Well, it, it's like a receipt of sorts, so that they don't become uh, Indian givers, like those... Uh, 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 Indians? No, 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 not, not the dot-headed curry munchers, the, um, no, no, the feathers, woo, 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 America, all that. They wanted all their land back after it was sold fairly and squarely. Well, quite. Hmm? You say I'm, I'm speaking too loudly? No, quite. Not quiet. Don't come that attitude with me. I'm an Englishman, not some retardate savage. An Englishman? Yes. How do you expect the natives to understand the treaty when you can't even deal with the Queen's English, old boy? I was talking to Lady Fanny Tetcom, and she said one of the chiefs used his facial tattoo as his signature. I heard one of them sign the blasted thing with his ass. Oh, no, no, no. That was Lord Montague. He's never been quite the same since he had that whole thing he drilled in his head by the Italian surgeon. That whole thingy, my dear, is known as a trepanation. You've had several trepanations, haven't you, Sir Gray? Don't be ridiculous. I've been dead for years. What in Jehovah's name is this? Who are you? And thanks largely to the advent of talkback radio, insightful political conversations like this can still be heard to this very day. Can somebody smell something burning? Who the hell are you? In fact, we've been arguing about the treaty since the day it was signed. And few have argued as provocatively as this man. We should not use the treaty as a basis for creating greater civil, political or democratic rights for Maori than for any other New Zealander. Following his controversial One Nation styled Oriwa address, Brash visited Waitangi only to face sledging that would have made the Australian cricket team proud. Some of it was poetic. From Banker to Wanker. And some of it less so. Shame, you smirking fuck. Shame. There are things, I think, which we need to say, and there are things which we're no doubt we need to hear. It was Don's darkest hour. And it was about to get worse when he received an unexpectedly earthy welcome on arriving here outside Tete Imarai. Mainstream meeting. <laughs> Not a bad shot. <laughs> Thankfully, his wife Jilan was on hand to help. Don Brash speaking. Hi, darling. On the phone, at least. The DPS man has just, at this moment, got my jacket in his hand, and the hotel has offered to do a sort of spot clean. Uh, they can't do a dry cleaning, it's only done in Whangarei, but uh, they can do a spot cleaning of it, and the DPS gentleman is just about to take the jacket off for that purpose. Uh, and the tie, it's not badly affected. The tie was not badly affected, but Brash was. His Waitangi Odyssey, a reminder of the perils of leadership. Very threatening stuff for you and me. It was, was more threatening than I've seen for quite a long time, sort of physically threatening. Right. To what, racial wars and, and so on, and don't forget most of them army are, are brown and it was quite, quite threatening. 
I mean, they were talking about what a nice meal you would make. Thankfully, the threat to cook Jerry was never carried out. However, had the Waitangi protesters had their way, it's believed the Brownlee carcass would have provided enough meat for several hapu, with plenty left over for a generous meat pack. <laughs> When you're above the law... You're contravening several human rights laws. Well, it almost worked, didn't it? Getting what you want is easy. Grab them by the balls and their hearts and minds will surely follow. The last episode ever. I got shot because of you. Still, I met a bird, a medical bird, called Nurses. In this Emmy award-winning drama... If you injure somebody in this car, it's technically a criminal offence. Shut up, you nancy ass fairy boy. Life on Mars, Monday, 8.30, TV1. You're trouble, my lord. I am poorly. Block nose, block sinuses. The Greeks have left a large wooden horse at the gates to the city. Drag it inside, I suppose. <laughs> Avoid stuff-ups. Sudafed unblocks your head so it clears your thinking. Well, if you've shifted house, don't forget to update your electoral enrollment details. The first Shiraz vine cuttings were brought to Australia in 1817. When George Wyndham planted his vineyard in the early 1830s, little did he know that Shiraz, with its smooth drinking style and generous fruit flavour, would become Australia's most popular red wine. Wyndham Estate, where Australian Shiraz began. At Noel Leeming, all our staff are trained in the Global Energy Star program to make sure you've got the most energy efficient appliances. Save money, save the planet, save water, all at the same time. Noel Leeming, proud sponsor, real proud. New Nivea for Men Extreme Comfort Shaving System for an irritation free shave. Extreme Comfort's natural microtech prevents irritation even while shaving. For an extremely comfortable shave, you can't get enough of. New Extreme Comfort Shaving Gel and Bar. Nivea for men. What men want. Does your car have side airbags? Even our smallest car has side airbags. And stability control. All for just $18,990. Kia. More car for your money. August is the month for Flyby Star Deals. There's loads of amazing offers up for grabs at participating companies. Plus, chances to win your dream reward. Enter at stardeals.co.nz. The more you shop, the more chances you have to win. Oh, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. Ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. New World's coupon book do, offers end this week. So be sure to get all the great savings that will make a big difference to your pocket. People loved how he had Dad's favourite jazz band at the funeral. The music brought back so many wonderful memories for everyone. For a funeral as unique and special as they were, Academy Funeral Services, here to help you through. Oh, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. Our sale wines are the toast of the town at prices we know you'll love. Choose from the Lindau Special Reserve range for only $12.99. Enjoy a Villa Maria private bin Sauvignon Blanc for only $9.99. Or try a Taylor's Estate Shiraz, Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon for only $11.99. The New World Wine Sale. Find something to celebrate today. And that's what gets results. We're going down. This is something you don't want to hear pilots say ever. How are we going to die? I actually went through, said goodbye to everybody in my family. I shouldn't be alive. Monday, TV One. We like to think that our general elections are won and lost on the big issues. But the reality may be quite different. While some may fret about health, education and crime others are more concerned with their balls
Well, as president of the Albion Cricket Club here in Dunedin, I would like to ask the four parties their views on sales tax on sporting goods. This ball here costs $11.95. Our senior team uses two of these a game. Our subscription is $20. Last year, our subscriptions didn't even uh, pay for our balls. This man was one of a random selection of voters invited to voice their chief concerns in 1975. The results were a fascinating insight into New Zealand society. I would like to know whether the current high rate of tax on the middle income bracket is likely to remain. My name is Mark Schofield and I'd like to know what inflation is, what causes it and what your parties are going to do about it. Hello, David Stott from Hamilton. I'm a life insurance representative. And I would like to ask the four leaders why we have to have compulsory unionism. In August 74, my weekly grocery account was $24.50. Today, to get the same number of items, I'd have to spend over $44. I would like to ask the leaders, what do they intend doing about stabilizing food prices? My name's Jennifer Page. I'm a solo parent with three children. I'd like to ask, what are your population policies? I'm Pat O'Shea, and I'm a pensioner. And I want to ask Mr Muldoon, what will happen to our five cent bus fare, our TV license and our telephone rental? Unsure of how to deal with these and other issues, the politicians turned to their advertising agencies. This is a party political broadcast from the National Party. Labour's financial manoeuvring has created a new elite to which Labour people cannot aspire. Labour has deserted its own people. Despite the big budgets enjoyed by National and Labour, and so this Labour government punished the criminal, it's always been the single issue parties that have been the true innovators. Social credit will reduce rates. Now there's a bold statement. Social credit was much admired for its use of blocks. While assets and debts accumulate, interest charges accrue twice as fast as the debt. Hi, I'm Gary Knapp. This is my wife, Lee, and my daughters, Persia and Shan. I have another In this spot, Gary Knapp is so wooden, it's as if someone has thrown a chair into the room. A big Rimu one. This is Ken, a buddy of mine. We've caught a lot of fish together. Well, he's caught them. I usually end up cleaning them. The McGillicuddy Serious Party wowed us with cotton wool animation. While the Greens gave us mastermind. Diane Gatward, your subject is the Green Party of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Two minutes on that topic starting now. Is the Green Party a serious contender in the election? Yes. Opinion polls indicate the Greens are already the third major party in New Zealand. Correct. Today's Greens began as the Values Party. Over 300,000 people said no to the cutting down of our last native forests. They were pioneers of apocalyptic animation in the days before we discovered that we could save the planet with a woven green shopping bag. We should be making use of our trees only at the rates at which they can be replaced. But the Greenies share something in common with the major parties. They love to scare us shitless. Can money buy us a new planet? One of the rising stars of the Values Party was Jeanette Fitzsimons. In 1976, she gave Kiwis their first glimpse of green-style shopping. Um, could I have two pounds of the courgettes, please? I'd always take a shopping basket rather than use the paper ones that they give you. Uh, don't put them in a bag, they'll be all right in here. Thank you. At the time, few thought Jeanette's parsimonious nitpickery would ever catch right, on. Write it down, yeah. Have you stopped using plastic bags? No. It's crap. Nonsense. Um... And they come in a lovely tin. Look, you can use it for all kinds of biscuits and things afterwards because it's got a lid that... Christian's been decorating the outside and selling them on the trading table with biscuits oh, what and a things good inside. idea. Whether it be saving giant mammals, preserving our indigenous culture, or the age-old problem of public masturbation, 
There's no doubt that this country is plagued by perennial issues. And whilst it's easy to believe that we live in unique times, the fact remains that the burning issues of today are often the same as the burning issues of yesterday, endlessly recycled and reused in an ongoing discourse of disharmony. In this, our Aotearoa, land of issues.